like Batman and Robin. Holy hole and a donut. Or maybe a bit more like Bert and Ernie. Hey, Bert. This is Luke and Lewis on Triple M Modern Digital. Luke and Lewis on Triple M Modern Digital. Welcome to the show. <laughs> What happened? You're usually pretty excited to be here. Oh, man, I'm excited. I'm just tired. (laughs) You sure? I'm just really sleepy, guys. You didn't Um, seem that tired before we went on air. Man, I'm a good actor. (laughs) (laughs) You are a bit tired today because you spent all last night... Doing something very important. No, doing a live stream. Well, we'll get into it after, right? You did a live stream... Mm -hmm. Pretty much all night. Look, I don't know the full details because I think it was over by the time I woke up this morning. Mm. But um, we'll go into it in the, sh- in the I want to find out why you've been so distracted and tired all day. And also, I've been laughed at three times today in the office, and I want to yeah. get into it just soon. A, just really, everyone's just laughing at you, Luke. It's not with you either. <laughs> no, it's fully at me. First time, no, one of the times I deserved it, the other time, no idea. Yeah. All right. So we're going to get into that after the break. This is Luke and Lewis. <laughs> Luke and Lewis on Triple M. <laughs> Modern digital. <laughs> Still a bit tired there, Lewis. Yeah, I'm, I'm very tired. Explain why. I didn't sleep very well. Um, well, basically, last night, there's a, a, a YouTuber that gives regularly gives t- large sums of money to people that are streaming live on YouTube. Yep. Uh, so what I thought I would do is set up a live stream called live streaming until this guy gives me $10,000. Yeah. And uh and what you're expecting the title. you're expecting him to give you the $10,000 in the first hour cuz you started the live stream at 9 p.m. Yes. And I went to bed at about 1 a.m. Yeah. and you were still going then. Yes. And I woke up at about Six this morning, yep. and just like I wasn't waking up for good, I just w- woke up, filled up my drink bottle, went to the toilet, and then I was like, "Oh, I'm going to check if Lewis is still live streaming." And I went on YouTube and found a live stream of you just snoring like <laughs> in your bed, and there were like a hundred people watching it, <laughs> and I was like, "What?" Yeah, so I just, I just, well, it's in the title. I was just like, "I'm going to stream until this guy gives me the money." <laughs> Problem with that is he's in California, so I started my stream when it was like. 3 a.m. when he would have been asleep. Oh. So I really just wasted six hours. So not, a, not a great tactic. Yeah, I know. Started at the wrong time. Uh, he did end up finding out about it and he joined yeah. the stream and then he uh, didn't give you $10,000. He, he left immediately. Oh, ambitious. <laughs> um, and the thing that got me was, though, that just how much you committed to this and the fact that. Well, hundred. I... There's no, the fact that there's a hundred people in the world right now walking this earth mm. that. If given the opportunity, would watch you sleep. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the thing is, what surprised me is not my commitment to the idea. If I said I was going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to say watch you sleep. You couldn't really see you from the angle that I tuned in on. It was just like your head was kind of under the doona. I just knew it was you sleeping, though. Yeah, and it was the worst sleep ever because I kept the lights on because for some reason I turned them off and all the comments were like, we can't see you, we can't see you. I'm like, I'm going to be asleep. I won't be moving or talking. You don't, don't need worry. to see me. Don't watch this. Like, <laughs> Joe, do something else with it's your life. It's not worth watching. You should be sleeping too. Yeah. So I had the worst sleep ever. I kept waking up periodically, and every time I moved, the chat would just go nuts. Be like, oh, he moved. He's awake. He's awake. <laughs> What's he doing? That's like actually pretty entertaining. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was quite funny. I would wake up and then I'd get distracted by the chat, go back to sleep, but it's absolutely wrecked me today. So, yeah, what, what's the, the funny thing is not me doing it, it's the people spontaneously being like, oh, I'm going to watch this guy. I had people message me going, oh, I was watching for five hours last night. Great stream. I'm like, no, it wasn't. <laughs> that it was the point. It, it was funny. It was supposed about- to not be good. Yeah. Like it, people, some people complained, oh, this isn't like five hours some, into the Some thing. people are like, oh, I find it difficult to find the time to tune into your radio show, but I'll watch you sleep. <laughs> like get your priorities right. Like yeah. this is way better than you sleeping. Yeah. Well, I'd was- like to think anyway. <laughs> When it was like one in the morning, some guy was like, oh, this isn't funny. I'm like, dude, I've been streaming for six hours. It was funny for the first 45 minutes. Now I've been doing it for six hours. I know. (laughs) Now, I got some feedback this morning from some people listening to this show saying that your family was yawning incredibly loud because obviously the stream was still going when everyone woke up. Yeah. So when when I, I woke up, when my family started to woke up early in the morning and my family has this thing that they just do in the morning where everyone just yawns really comically loud and then everyone like, else just starts as a doing joke. it. Yeah, as a joke. It's like, uh, it's like I don't know. So your mum will wake up and be like, yeah. Well, Dad started it. So he gets up and he goes, oh! and then about an hour later, mum will wake up and she'll go, ah! 
and then my brother starts doing it and I start doing it. It's like a it's like a joke that we're all doing that we have never ever spoken about. <laughs> no no one has ever been like, Hey, are you doing this? It's just a thing that we do that is completely normal. So you've completely forgot about this joke that your family does and yeah. then you're still live streaming and to the hundred people well, still. What watching happened it. was mum was outside my room, she was in her bedroom, and then dad just goes and all the comments go off going, what was that? What was that noise? <laughs> What's going on? And then about 10 minutes later, mum goes, Aah! and then the comments go nuts. Was that a yawn? And then I was like, oh yeah, our family do that. And then I did it. And you have, to, ex- started doing you have it. to explain the weirdest in joke of all time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so in that you can only do it if you're related to me. <laughs> I mean, I'm lucky also that dad didn't walk past the camera naked. Oh, that's oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Your dad. Well, actually, can we talk about this next? Yeah, we'll we talk need about to go to song. But your dad walks around the house naked, and I've actually wanted to bring this up with you yeah. for quite some time right, because well, I've been there when he's been nude, yes. and it's uncomfortable. <laughs> Bit of a nudist. <laughs> we'll talk about it next. Luke and Lewis. Lewis, uh, before the break, you just mentioned quickly at the end, uh, we were talking about uh, some weird habits that your family gets up to, and you uh-huh. mentioned that your dad often walks around the house nude. Yeah, so and what's that's a- the relevance to weird habits? <laughs> well, uh, some people would argue that that's <laughs> out of the ordinary, and the most people generally walk around clothed. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> and you also walk around clothed, unless you do this too. Yeah, no, no one else. My dad walks around naked all the time, and it's something that he's done ever since I was born, and he still does it today. Mum doesn't do it. I don't do it. My brother doesn't do it. He's the only one who does it. He's been doing it since he was 15. But he's not like a nudist, like a public no, nudist. No, what he'll do is he generally it's just the trip from his bedroom to the shower. Yeah. If he, he'll just, instead of taking his clothes off in the bathroom, he'll take them off in the bedroom and walk all the way down the hallway, which is probably about 20 meters. It's quite a long hall. Right in the middle of the house. And he has to walk past the front door mm. to do this, yeah. past the living room, yep. uh, past, past bedroom. your bedroom, yep. which means that when I'm over and at past your the house. kitchen too. It's like, it's, it's every Yeah, past room. every room. It's yeah. from one house, it's from one end of the house to the other, and he'll yeah. just do a big nudie walk. Yeah. And the thing is, I, I guess I've mentioned it before because one day I was at your house and. Yeah. We were in your living room, and and a, and a nude figure just walked past the door, yeah. and I kind of looked at you like, "Is that weird? Is it? Are you being like? I thought you had an intruder. Yeah. I was like, "Oh my god, you're being robbed <laughs> by a naked guy." <laughs> yeah, but I don't even. Yeah, I have to remind myself that for other people, you looked at that's me like so weird. You were like, "What's wrong? It's just Dad." You were like, oh, I, and then I remember you saying, "I was like." What's that? And you're like, oh, haven't you met dad before? Yeah. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I've just never seen his uh, his bits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, my girlfriend has, my brother's friends have. It's just something that if you're over at our house regularly, he's not he's not trying to, but I know. at some point, he's got, you're going to cop You're going to cop dad. some junk. Yeah. Which is fine, but here's yeah. the thing. So the first time I was like, oh my God, I'm, I was shocked. I was just yeah. a bit rattled by it. The second time, I was around the house and he walked by the bedroom door or whatever and I saw a nude figure yeah. walk by. I just went, oh, Simon's home. Great. Yeah. Because the thing is, he does, it, <laughs> he does it normally. If someone ran past and they were like covering their bits and they'll go, oh, like, and making yeah. a big deal out of it, you would be like, oh, that's weird. But because yeah, dad- you'd be like, what an exhibitionist. Dad because is he's a, actually a an exhibitionist, yeah. it's like not even a show. He does it so <laughs> casually that you don't even notice. Like, I, I wish I had the confidence of your dad. Exactly. Sometimes I'll pass my dad in the hallway. He's naked, I'm not. I'll be like, hey, dad, good morning. He'll be like, hey, mate. <laughs> That's weird. So, yeah, the, do you find that weird? Not at all, because it happens like every day. I think I've seen I mean, your... there's no contact, of course, but it's just... <laughs> I didn't... I wasn't <laughs> suggesting that, yeah, both, I don't know. Yeah, but that's... What, we're not giving each other high fives. That's but, um, it is a weird thing. I've seen your dad's junk yeah. more recently than I've seen my dad's junk, which yeah. shouldn't be a thing. <laughs> Mike, would you like to come over tomorrow morning? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Free show? Dude, I just wish I had that confidence, man. Yeah, me too, really. Because, yeah, it's, it, it is strange. I mean, he's been doing it since he was like 15. He there's, struts. There's, it's there's arrogant. A, I know. There's an old family photo of him at like 15 of him just naked in, mm. in the living room. But that's asleep. fine. But that's when like, you know, when you, we're young, right? I'm mm. at the peak of my... Like, I'm, I'm at my physical peak right now, and I don't... Are you saying that my dad's let himself go? No, I'm saying that he's middle-aged, and if I ever got to that age and felt the confidence that I'd be a very happy man. And Simon, <laughs> if you're listening, 
keep it up, and I'll see you soon. I'll see all, I'll see all of you soon. You see now that's <laughs> you know I'm that's not gonna weird. I'm not gonna come over now. <laughs> <laughs> You're banned, <laughs> Lewis. What amuses you? What amuses me? What makes you laugh? What makes you tick? Uh, anyone over fifteen on rollerblades. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. Very amusing. That's a appropriate thing to make a human being laugh. Even Would you more agree? more funny than that. People on rollerblades stacking it. Even better. Comedy gold. Yep. Very oh. normal thing to laugh at. Lewis, I've been laughed at three times today. Have you been oh, rollerblading no, twice. in the office? No, I haven't. <laughs> I didn't, wasn't even wearing rollerblades both times. All right. Which is why the first time... The second time, I, okay, I kind of deserved it. But the first time, mm. I have no idea why I got laughed at. Right. I'm not sure if he was laughing at me. I'll tell you the situation. Okay. I just finished up going to the bathroom here, yep. and I walked over to the sink to wash my hands, and I put my hand under the automatic soap dispenser. I went... Duh, duh, not very Because it makes a little noise, right? Yeah. But it was out of soap, but it still makes the mechanical noise like it, it's trying to put out soap, but it had Fairly no soap left. Fairly normal thing to happen. Not too and uh, a guy who works in the building with us, um, yeah. just next to me, saw me kind of get no soap on my hand, mm. but try to, yeah. and he went... <laughs> so he just started like giggling and I was like, oh, this, this is, is weird. evil laugh right? about soap dispensers. And then, it's not where it stops. Yeah. So then I walk over to get, I, I wash my hands anyway, no soap, just wash them thoroughly, then went over to the hand towel and you know, you often pull one down from the dispenser. Oh, this is I funny. went to pull it down yeah. and there were no hand towels, so no soap, then no oh. hand towels and that just set him off. So he was already giggling from no soap. Yeah. And apparently if you get a no soap, no hand towel combo, oh boy. Funny He just ever. Oh, <laughs> oh mate. Well, I wouldn't even that wouldn't even elicit a nose laugh from me. Like I wouldn't even go I wouldn't even think, oh, no soap, no hand towel. I'd be like I don't know, I wouldn't even It's not really anything, is it? That's or if s- anything, you could be like ah, Have you met this guy? No, we've never spoken in the office. Right. And he goes, Oh, nothing's going right today for you, is it? And I was like, do you not judge my entire day on this one small interaction we've had, like, just because two things in consecutively, I guess, haven't gone to plan. But I did, did you what... do anything right today? No, that's true. <laughs> He's spot on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> that cut deep. <laughs> What's and the second thing? Second time, I, I probably deserved it. Okay. Yesterday, uh, you know... Now I'm interested. Guys, I do a lot of stupid stuff. Yes. It's no secret on the show. I told a story yesterday of me uh, trying to lock a microwave at Baker's Delight with my car keys. Yes. <laughs> uh, which, thinking back on that, I've realized that it's even dumber because microwaves don't lock. Lock. <laughs> They don't lock. They never have locked. Like, if you tried to lock your car, your, your home don't, door, yeah. maybe, sure, keys. Keys, yeah. You've never had to use a microphone and a key together. No. Especially a car key. A microwave, idiot. So, it's a, what did I say? You said microphone. No, I'm talking to a microphone. I'm staring at one. Whatever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, again, that's not the stupidest thing I've done today. So, okay. I went and got my daily kebab. As you know, I enjoy the kebabs down the street, yeah. and I was a getting very excited. Radio show kebab. Yeah, I Classic. didn't eat any lunch or breakfast really, so I was super uh-huh. excited. Um, was getting into the office and uh, sorry, getting to the elevator. And as I was getting to the elevator, there was a couple of girls from the building here taking, yeah. uh, doing being on the door. There was an event upstairs, so I'm yeah. like, "Oh, what are you guys doing downstairs?" They're like, so I started chatting to them, and then waiting for the elevator there goes ding, and I get it. All right, guys, see you later. So I get in the elevator, yeah. and then I hit the closed door button. And I'm just staring at my kebab, like, I'm, I'm so excited to eat this. I can't wait. I'm going to go upstairs and just, oh, look at that tomato. Oh, the, the lamb. I was just, I was yeah. like, I was almost, I was just, was I couldn't believe it. Your kebab. I couldn't believe it. Uh, it was like the, the garlic distribution on the kebab was fascinating me at the time. Yes. And then about a minute later, I was like, this has taken a long time <laughs> for the elevator to go up done. one level. I know what you've done. And then... <laughs> The door goes ding and opens. I'm still on the ground level. I'm staring at a kebab, <laughs> and the girls I just had a conversation just openly started laughing at me. So, a whole minute you passed. Never push the button. I never pushed the button to go up. And not only that, I didn't even realize I was so like intensely focused on my kebab. I didn't even realize for the first bit that the door had opened until I heard laughter coming in my direction. They're like, "Didn't you press the button?" And I was like, "Oh no, I was looking at my kebab." <laughs> <laughs> Which is the saddest sentence you can... Like, that's not a great defense. Well, do you know why I knew what you'd done? Yeah. I did the same thing last week. 
<laughs> Luke, uh, we had a bit of a discussion this morning where you uh, came to the shocking discovery that I don't have food in my house anymore. Well, uh, we had even, to, even though I live with my parents. We had to meet uh, about fifty minutes away from your house this morning, yeah. and uh, you called me and saying, "Hey, I'm here early, just going to get something to eat. Haven't had breakfast yet." Mm. And I was like, "He's like, you're like, where are you?" And I was like, "Well, I was having breakfast at home." Yeah. I was like, "Why are you?" going 50 minutes away from your house mm. to have breakfast and you went oh there's no food in my house and that blew my mind and I was like not even cereal yeah and you know what there's no cereal there's no food you know what Luke what do you keep in your in your pantry well here's the thing Luke when, when how old are you 21 it's the end days of food of, <laughs> of your parents buying food not. right no it's true and when I was 21 I, I, was, I was like man this food that my parents buy it's going to last forever not so all right, I'm 24 now, and at, I think at some point, I think it was like last year, my parents just t- talked to each other without me, and were like, why are we buying groceries for enough groceries for a 23-year-old? We could just save a lot of money by only buying enough food for ourselves. He has a job. He can buy his own groceries. And Bye. I woke up the next day, no wheat bix because they don't eat wheat bix There's no... There's no pasta in the fridge. There's no. So one shop, they came home with just stuff for them and none for you. Yeah. So they'll cook dinner for themselves. They don't cook dinner for us anymore. We're too old. And you know what? Fair enough. I don't deserve for them to be buying food for me. And I'm telling you, Luke, it's the end times of food. Do you, do you still have snacks in your house? Well, here's, here's what happened with snacks. Okay. All through high school, there's mm. snacks galore because I had snacks at school. Yeah. And then pretty Me snacks too. dried up the day I graduated. I know. Because all of a sudden, my parents are thinking, oh, well, he doesn't need snacks anymore. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm at home all the time now. I need snacks more than ever. It was the first time in my life where I actually wanted a snack. That's the <laughs> warning sign, man. Well, first, first, they take your snacks and you don't say anything. Then I did. I, I actually arced up. I was like, where's these snacks going? Did it work? Yeah, then we got Savoy's back in the house, mm. which was like a good win as a yeah. Savoy boy. But that's why I'm such a Savoy boy, is because it's the only snack. That's that what I'm saying, man. Snacks, they're the first one to we go. We have rice crackers, pretty soon, noodles. Pretty soon they'll start taking away. Roll-ups, man. Yeah. Gone. Gone. Out pretty, the door. The Rolling out thing, the door. <laughs> mate, the next thing is like uncooked pasta, pasta sauce in the fridge that mum made. Soon that'll disappear. And then... What about leftovers? No, because that that's like the last thing. Because after oh. after dinner to oh cook, you lose cereal. I lost cereal. Just move six out. The ago. only like I'd probably move out. I'm just hanging around home. Yeah. A because I can't afford it. That's the actually the only reason. But B the sub reason is. I get food. Yeah. I get. I. You know what I mean. There's leftovers. But now I got Luke, cereal every morning. I'm if living, I moved out, I'd have to buy rice bubbles. I know. <laughs> I mean, living, you, don't, you just don't think of that. <laughs> I like that I said that. Like that was a mature thing to do. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like I'm gonna have to go to the shops all by myself and buy a kid's cereal. <laughs> That's what I have to do. That's what I'm telling you, Luke. We're in the same boat. I can't afford to move out, but I'm because I'm 24. The snacks have dried up, and pretty. I'm in the end times. Oh my god. Leftovers have left. They're, they cook exactly enough food for mum and dad, and fair enough, there's nothing for me. It's over. I'm going to starve to death or learn how to cook, but, you know, I'm going to starve to death. It's been a year, and you just eat out all the time. You travel 50 minutes for poached eggs. Yes. I don't want to get to that point. Because when I make them, mate, they're runny. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about Ed Sheeran a lot over the past few days, and it's time, Luke, for the f- for the finale. Well, yes, I did have one more Ed Sheeran story to tell you. It was kind of an eventful night. Um, I mean, a night at Ed. You were saying on the show a while ago that you didn't think Ed was an arena show. and Well, I think he's an amazing artist, but, but I'm not sure if the type of music that he makes would be good in an arena. Well, I can tell you firsthand that it was. It yeah. was a good sing-along. Everyone had their phones out. But the thing that got me was that it was not an arena, so there's very strict rules regarding crowd safety, which is fair enough. If you've got 50,000 yeah. people in a room, there's got to be some Someone's rules. Someone's going to do something stupid. Yes. And, uh, and some of these rules were made because you have a suspicion that... The reason the rule was made was because 
someone had done the thing in the past. It was only well, yeah. the rule was only brought in because someone had gotten hurt. Well, that's why most rules come in. But in places like arenas where there are so many people, there are so many different ways you can hurt yourself or somebody yeah. else by being an idiot. That often you'll go to an arena and it'll just be a strange but, rule. But this one, yeah, I I came across a strange rule that I couldn't. I wouldn't have even thought of hurting someone in this particular way, but clearly yeah. it's happened in the past. So I originally, when you're going through like the security check into uh, yep. Etihad Stadium, uh, they go no water bottles, and I was mm-hmm. like, fair enough. Uh, you could bring alcohol or whatever in. So yep. like, fair enough. So chuck out your water bottles. So I threw out my water bottle. Yeah, that makes sense. And then um, so I went and bought one when I got in there from uh-huh. the stand, and it's also a money ploy. They make a bit of money out of you doing that. Yeah. And I bought one. So you obviously allowed a water bottle, but just so not, just a plastic. You're water not allowed bottle. to take one from home. Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. bought a Mount Franklin plastic water bottle mm-hmm. and was walking down the grandstands and onto the field, which is where we were standing throughout the concert. Yep. And as I walked onto the field, the lady said, oh, sorry, you're not allowed to take your bottle cap. The plastic the bottle cap. And I was no like, cap. And I was like to her, and I was fine. I was cooperating, but I was like, I just, sorry, I just want to know why. Yeah. That's so weird. That and is, she's like, yeah, with a it's really cap. weird. Well, it's not that. She goes, in the past, people have been throwing full water bottles over the crowd at people's heads. Oh. So the thought process is if you don't have a bottle cap on it, even if you well, throw by the time it, it hits by the time someone. it hits someone, it'll be half empty. Yeah. That's, that's actually... But I never even thought, Dude. oh, I should throw a plastic water bottle over the crowd. But you know that that must have been such a problem. There was a board meeting on how do we solve the bottle throwing crisis? Yeah. Do we make smaller bottles? Do we make lighter bottles? And then someone was like, what if, guys... <laughs> we take the caps off or we ban caps. It yeah. was like... But the thing right. is, you're allowed bottle caps in the stands. It was mm. just in the standing room on the field. So they didn't take the bottle cap off me until I stepped onto the football field. So right. everyone else in the seating area, so they're, really, allowed they're, a, not, they're allowed to chuck bottles at people's heads. They're not protecting the audience then. They're no, just they're, trying to protect the act. So someone's chucked a bottle at the act. This is what really got me. Yeah. Ed Sheeran walks on stage about half an hour, hour, half an hour later, plays yeah. a couple of songs, then walks out of his water bottle, has a sip, and I see him unscrewing the top. <gasps> and I'm like, what? He's allowed a cap? He's See? on the ground. <laughs> you know why? That confirms my theory. They don't care about the audience. They just yeah. care about the act. It's, so the it's act an Ed can rule. throw full water bottles. I was going to say, the and crowd. then I felt unsafe. I was like, Ed's going to start pelting us with Mount Franklin bottles here, and we're all and what? And the stadium's going to do nothing about it. I would have loved the same lady to be over the other side of the curtain. Ed's like his music, his intro mm. music's playing. He's like, "Welcome to the stage, Ed Sheeran." Sorry, Ed, you're going to have to Excuse remove your me. bottle. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to remove your bottle cap. And he's like, "Oh, why?" <laughs> Let me tell you a story. <laughs> <laughs> Luke and Lewis on Triple M Modern Digital. It's time to do, uh, well, I don't really know what to call this segment anymore. Well, we it used c- to be called Simo's Weekly Rap. But uh, we decided Simo needed to have a week off um, yes. because my brother Jack and him have almost an ongoing feud on this show now, mm. which we kind of started because uh, Jack thinks he can bring more to the show, bring more value to the show than Simo. Yes. So we said to Simo, hey, take a week off and we'll give Jack a chance to bring... I mean, to bring his A-game, I guess. I hope he's brought his A-game. So this segment is where we get our modern digital mate to just bring whatever breaking news stories that they think. We're uh, busy, guys. We don't have time to look at the news during the week. So at the end of every week, we get uh, usually our modern digital mate, Simo. But today, my brother, Jack, uh, doing a weekly wrap. And um, Jack's on the line. Welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Um, are you excited? Are you excited to uh, be up against Simo this week? Because you are being definitely compared in our eyes and the listeners. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say I'm excited to be up against Simo. Maybe just confident? it'll be nice. It'll yeah, confident is better. Right. Better than well, that, that's big words because this could this it's potentially could be your only weekly rap, depending on how you go. And that's I mean, it okay could be... too. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that you don't want to be a regular news I'm reader saying, on the show? I'm saying I'm busier than Simo is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I, I definitely believe That's that. That's one of the reasons why we do get Simo, yeah. is that he's often available to do these types of things. He just needs stuff to do, and he's always like, yeah, I'm not doing much. <laughs> <laughs> I just called him then, and I was like, uh, we're actually going to get Simo on the line to critique you, but it's like, oh, oh I'm heading down to the beach. Yeah, uh, can we do it next week? <laughs> One of the rare times that Simo was actually busy. <laughs> All right, Jack. I'm joining him tomorrow, actually. Um, we've got your new intro. We've got a Jack's Weekly Rap intro. Have you, heard, on have you heard Simo's intro, Jack? Simo's Weekly. Uh, is it the I'll Have a Beer for You one? Yeah, yeah, yeah the original. You've uh, heard yeah, that? Yeah. This is your one. Big stories. Breaking news. Jack's Weekly Wrap. 
I'll have a beer for you. What do you think, mate? <laughs> You've just literally given me the, just changed the name to Jack. <laughs> well, that's that's legally you, right. How can you tell? That's the only difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, no, I mean, that's what I mean. You've just changed the name. Wait, I, I, d- 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 <laughs> We also didn't pre-record it. We did it live on air. And, we just, and, got, we just got Mike to mute the audio. We said Jack. And did it went you well. want a new? Um, um, did you want a new catchphrase, or are you happy with "I'll have a beer for you"? Uh, we'll see. Maybe at the end I might sign off. We'll see how we go. Like, oh, I'll have a chai latte. Well, how for about you or something? How about at the end we'll, just, we'll play latte. the intro again, and we'll just mute it at the catchphrase part, and you just throw something in. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Great. All right. <laughs> Give us your uh, first story. Let's do this. Okay. Story number one. Barbara Streisand. Everyone's familiar with Barbara Streisand? Yes. Yes. Came out this week that she cloned her dog three times. Right. <laughs> Why yeah, not? So That's weird to do it three times. Like, usually when people clone something, very odd. they just do it twice. Yeah. So she's got, like, she had a dog, and then she's got three little clone dogs now. Right. And I just don't understand. Like, wouldn't that, I, I'm assuming that the first dog is dead. Otherwise, right. you wouldn't bother cloning it. So wouldn't that I make so. sad? Like, and then she thinks that it's going to love it. So, oh, it's not going to pop out and be like, oh, I love Barbara already. It's a different yeah, dog. it's going to look like your old dog. Sorry, It's not the same dog, though. Jack, you did say news came out this week. Or are you sure it came out this week? Or did it come out on February 22nd? Oh. Because that's what I've got here on Google, mate. Are you bringing us oh. old news to the show? Yeah, maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> What's your source? I linked you HuffingtonPost.com. It wasn't Huffington Post. It was 100% Lad Bible. <laughs> Lad Bible. Well, right. there's your problem. You're bringing Lad Bible news onto our show, Which, mate. by the way, is not a step down from Simo because he's also done that in the past. Oh, I've had about 90 minutes ninety minutes notification that I'm going to be on tonight as well. I haven't, I've been at work. So. That's usually about 80 minutes more than we give Simo. Yeah, fair enough. Also, yeah, but he, he knows you've had he's a doing week, every week. Man. We organised this last time. <laughs> <laughs> I but, told you about this last week. Oh, I, did, I, I didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right. Sorry. Well, hit us with your next story, mate. I hope right. it's current. This is a front pager. This is a, this is a cracker. Yep. Five hundred million dollars worth of gold, diamond, and platinum fell out the bottom of of a plane as it was flying or well, flying along this week, yeah. just because the guys forgot to put the hatch up properly. What kind of plane wow. is carrying but that much I, cash? What I'm surely, surely this is like a look. We're carrying some good cargo, boys. Mm. Be here at about five o'clock. I'm going to open the hatch as we go past yeah. and just take as much as you can. Oh, so you there think no it was an organized hatch open? 100%. You can't, you can't, you can't... Like, if you've got $500 million worth of stuff in yeah, one place... It doesn't slip out. You don't forget to put the hatch. Someone's going to check it, surely. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, that's Check a good story. But that's, a, that's a true story. That's yeah, I can see it here well, I'm on glad you haven't lied. <laughs> you brought us two stories from Lad Bible, Jack. Was that one actually on Lad Bible? Yes, it is. Look at it uh, now. At like 13 uh, hours ago. At least it's That wasn't now. my source. Oh, which source did you use? I just Googled Sky News weird stories. Say your own. Like say it. say I, I went out I went out on the field and sourced this news. I got hit in the head by a gold bar. That's what, that's what really <laughs> See, happened. See, that's what we want. That's a scoop. <laughs> that is See? good. That's good. I like Simo that never chat. brings uh, a hit in the head by, <laughs> the, by the story scoop. No, he, he wouldn't ne- take he a never, hit for the boys. No, he wouldn't. He never comes to the show with head injuries. <laughs> Neither would you, but you would Google Sky News <laughs> for the I boys. Would. Well, oh, well, how do you reckon you did compared to Simo? Oh, look, considering the lack of prep work, okay. I, I mean, I've listened to a, maybe a couple of them. The ones he's made me listen to, I've listened to. Which is all of um, them. <laughs> which, yeah, which is most of them. Well, and at like least, the, the you know, the positive similar. about this is they were okay news stories, but at least you're not going to tell all your friends at work that you did this. <laughs> that's oh, no, the difference between you and Simo. Yeah, that's true. I do like this new modest news reader. He's like, yeah, look, I did an all right job, guys. What yeah. do you think? It's- Simo <laughs> will have a tendency to bring two pretty average stories to the show and then pump his tyres up for the last two minutes of the segment. <laughs> So we like this. Well, I, I, maybe maybe you're not our modern digital man. Maybe you're just our modest digital man. <laughs> Are we just re-emphasizing the modern? Yes, the modest. Okay. modest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's give you a chance to sign out with the official intro. Well, so hang on. What I'm actually going to do, I'm just going to, I might, uh, I might get some assistance with my sign off here. Okay. Not from you guys. Right. I've got my assistance with me, but we'll just incorporate that in. You're ready. Yeah. All right. All right. Do you know when to come in in the intro? So it goes nah. Jack's <laughs> weekly rap, and then and then Simba goes, "I'll have a beer for you," and then okay, we so fade it after there. Jack's weekly rap. All, All right. right. You yeah. ready? All right. Three, two, one. Big stories, breaking news. Jack's weekly rap. I'll have a beer. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that Chloe wooing? <laughs> 
Get an original. No, I don't like nah, this. Get I him want, off. I want Simo That's back. not even your. Yeah, Simo's coming back next week, Jack. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us. That's Jack. the worst part. He's like, I don't really want to do this. But if you, <laughs> that's fine, Ben. Thank, thank I'll, you for uh... your unenthusiastic contribution to the show. Oh, you're welcome. I'll see you at home later, Luke. Bye. <laughs> Luke and Lewis on Triple M Modern Digital. That's the end of the show, guys. I'm very excited. It's fist bump Fridays. I'm having a sleepy fist bump. You are. You're barely getting your fist off the table. Mate, the main thing is is that I'm I'm pumping. I'm fisting. You're not, you're not really pumping. pumping it. I, well, it's, pump I'm, it more. It's a sleepy. Give pump. it a pump, mate. Mate, just call me little pump. <laughs> Actually, big pump. Yeah. All right. Large, That's the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Gigantic uh, pump. Great. Humongous pumpers. <laughs> end the show, please. <laughs> That's the end of the show, guys. We're going to be back on Sunday. Uh, we will see you there. Ooh. Ooh. Had to get that drop in before we end the show, ladies and gentlemen. You know what always surprised me? Every single week I get Snapchats and Instagrams of yeah. people just pumping along by themselves in their cars. Yeah. And to that, I was about to say I salute you, but I pump in your general direction. Yes. <laughs> Keep pumping out there. Never yep. stop. Make sure you enjoy the drop as well. Yep. Don't stop. Enjoy the drop. It's Luke Lewis. We'll see you later. <laughs>